got your share on. Okay, well, I, I thought we were already... Well, let's, well, we'll, we'll jump right in then if you're going to share. Okay. Share away on share this away. 2nd of April. Let's how, start sharing. Are, how is everybody? Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Speaking of sportscasters, we're going to be talking yes. to Tom Harrington in a couple of minutes. Hi, everybody. Hi. <clears throat> this is Don, and I'm Ted. Yeah. And today, April the 2nd. Yep. 1513. Ponce yes. de Leon. Ponce de Leon, yes. Ponce de Leon mm -hmm. uh, was the first European to sight Florida. On to, to sight or, or psych? Sight. Oh, I see. Florida, April the 2nd. 1530 there is there's Ponce. There there's Ponce. Ponce. <laughs> and there's there's that's Florida. Yeah. And then of course he uh he put money down on, on a condominium immediately. Yes. And uh, his property that values was on have April tanked. the second. That's right. I'm, I'm sorry. His property values have tanked of, since then. Yeah, pretty much. His his <laughs> place is uh, is over here. Of course, the governor is an idiot, but that's a whole other story. Oh, oh yes, he's the, he's the one who wants to uh, isolate New Yorkers. Yeah. April the second, nineteen fifteen. Oh, we have a, oh we have a, a date marker between. Very nice. You've you've been busy. April the 2nd, 1915. That's different font from the other one. That's very impressive. Okay. Uh, the uh, Prime Minister, Robert Borden, held um, a cabinet meeting to discuss the development at oh, the no. Dominion Observatory, <laughs> the possibility of uh, the Dominion Observatory official time signal. You had to be dreaming about breast. That was... <laughs> It was around one o'clock, but they weren't sure yet because they had not developed the clock to know exactly Been when one o'clock. So this is April the 2nd, 1915. Six. The world was at war. Yeah. And there is uh, uh, Mr. Borden, a unionist government by that time. Oh, yes. There is the Dominion uh, Observatory on Observ Carling Street in, in Ottawa. Carling, in Ottawa. Yeah. Thank you very much. And the Dominion Security, uh, Dominion Security, Dominion Observatory was, of course, founded in 1902. 1902. My, the, the, the variety of fonts you've dug up is uh, quite <laughs> impressive. <laughs> and knowing and you, it, it took you nine hours to, to dig I, all this shit up, right? I've been up all night. <laughs> and uh, this I bought from a, 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 a group. in It's Quebec City Company. It's called La Tudip. Yes. You know, I've, been, I've been looking for... Uh, reusable coffee, and this can be used for tea as well, uh, filters. You fill it at the top, uh, and uh, you will open up the top, fill it at the top coffee, or put tea in there, and then you just plunk it into uh, boiling water, and uh, there you are. So I'm, I'm, I've ordered this. I'm, I'm not sure how good it is, but I'm, I'm willing to give it a try. The one I showed you yesterday was useless. I don't like using uh, the cloth ones, because they only last a few times and oh, they okay. actually take more energy to clean up. Because my so, mom actually uh, suggested uh, an outlet for the cloth ones, but... Uh, I oh, think okay. That, but I, I, I'm but willing this, to take all comers because I don't know, uh, I do not know how well this is going to work. I'm giving but it this, a this dumps this dunks into a cup? Is this a one-use thing? Yes? No, no, it's not one use. Oh, this you, is for a you, percolator? You put this, you put the coffee in here. I know, but it's, it's, it's in a cup only. It's for one serving, yes? Yes, one cup. Oh, okay. Exactly. Right. exactly. Yeah. And you can use it for tea as well. It's easy okay. to be washed out. It's dishwasher safe. Yeah, and, I, and I can see it coming now. A couple of weeks from now, you'll be putting loose change in it. So. <laughs> <laughs> because you will have forgotten what it's for. Yeah. But uh, You got any stamps? Uh, Okay, but Let's Lip is interesting. I'd never heard of the store, but you found them in Quebec City, Trois Rivières, I think. They, 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 got are, a, they are in outlet. Quebec City and yep. Levy. Levy. And yep. they are opening uh, opening a store in uh, and, Trois Rivières. Uh, well, three Rivers. It, 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 I beg your pardon? Out in Three Rivers there. Uh, up, in, up in Three Rivers. Yeah. So there's one in, in uh, Carrefour Saint-Ramuald mm -hmm. in uh, Levy. 
mm-hmm. across the river, and then there's one in Quebec. Wow. And, you know, I, so they've got outdoor stuff, and uh, I thought okay. this was a, a good idea. And this Excellent. is one of the, this, this is store in Quebec City. Excellent. Excellent. Quebec yeah. company. So uh, spend your money there. And there, there are more pictures. Uh, yeah, this is just uh, a nice Quebec picture City. of old Montreal. So. That's Quebec City, isn't it? No. No, no, that's that's, that's, that's old Montreal. Montreal. That's the uh, that's the Aldred uh, building. Yeah. There you go. And the yeah. corn the old corn exchange. We so there we are. Thank you so much. Okay. Let us bring uh, Thomas Harrington in here because uh, let me see if I can connect with him. He's got to go to work this morning. So let's just add him to the call and see how Tommy and get out of your sharing there. Would you please there, bud? Oh, right. Uh, Will do. So we'll see if Tommy's around. And, did uh, I do it properly? I th- yes, you did. Yes, you did. Okay. 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 Share a link, not on this call. Oh, no, we can't seem to get Tommy on here. Okay. Well, let us uh, let us take a quick little break. Oh, Tom Harrington. There has... he is. There he is, buddy. Hello, hey, Tom. John. How are you, buddy? How are you buddy? doing? He told me you weren't going to be on this. No, I'm just kidding. I, guess... <laughs> <laughs> I, I can get us all drinks. <laughs> I, can, can you hear us, Tommy? Yes, my boy. I can hear you loud and clear. So, all righty. Listen. Yeah. Here's the formal introduction. Tom Harrington, the God's gift from uh, Newfoundland, Labrador, uh, sports extraordinaire, hosted Marketplace for years. Now the world, this hour host since 2015. Gemini Award nominee, eight times Tommy has been nominated. That's and he important. even stole one once, didn't you, Tommy? And he makes us look like a couple of pikers here. I'm and he off, uh, yeah. <laughs> And Tom, whom we miss dearly, is in Tirana, and he's got to go to work in about an hour, so we thought we'd have him on. Tom, an, an absolute delight, and I'm going to get this out of the way now. You're going to blush, but my God, it is comforting to hear your voice on that rate on them radio waves uh, in good times and in bad, but especially in in bad times because it's uh, pros like you, my buddy, are fewer are getting fewer and far between. So God love you. And you're working their long shifts, Tommy. Yeah, you're working a long day. Yeah, I go in around noon, um, and the first one, and then we do eight eight shows. My last show is. Okay, you're cutting out on us, here, buddy. Have we yeah, lost? It's a long day. It's but it's for me with the with what we're dealing with now. It's like a, as I often say, it's a bit like drinking out of a fire hose, and everything bad, it tastes bad. Uh, there's just it's relentlessly bad news, and that, that's kind of difficult because there's no relief, and it comes at you really fast too. That's the other thing about this story. It's I always uh, the other analogy I've used. It's a bit like um, a natural disaster, except it happens every day, everywhere at the same time. Uh, right, and it, and it really comes at you hard and fast. We're, I think we're doing a good job. I'm really proud of what we're doing. You are doing an excellent day. job, and you've got yes, a good. I, I don't know who's behind you, but it sounds like you've got a pretty good crew there because. The three of us have done this job, and you need some pretty strong and agile people to back you up. And then uh, when things are breaking and they're handing you stuff and things are coming through your ear, you need a pretty good bunch of folks in the background. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm really lucky that way. It's a small unit. And uh, I also get to play a little on Fridays as I host the World at Six now on Fridays. It's a regular gig for me, too. So I get to play in the sandbox a bit there. It's a fuller show. We get to tackle some more stuff. But uh, either way, it's been remarkable. In fact, the World at Six just little inside stuff. Uh, almost half, more than half the staff is now working from home. The only people there are the host, uh, Susan Bonner or me, um, a, a, a sort of a producer on site, a, a, a technician and a studio director. Everybody else is at home. Just the writer. That must be kind of eerie on top of everything else. It is. Completely, you know what, Dave, on the fourth floor, you've been in the Toronto newsroom there, which is massive, you could shoot a can through it. It's really spooky and you know, most people are at home now. It's a very, very small crew in the building. The whole, I mean, you walk through the atrium, there's nobody in there. You walk, if, if you got off the elevator several floors, you wouldn't see anybody. It's, it's weird. Is there uh, only the, I mean, it is an enormous building the way the one in Montreal is. Is there the only one entrance, I mean, on John Street or Front Street where you can go in for uh, everybody? You got to go in one entrance? Have- yeah, as long as you have your pass, you can get into any of them. But um, there are no public entrances open anymore for the main reasons, like the, for physical distancing. So people can't gather in the atrium anymore. Uh, the TV, the monitors are off, that sort of thing. So if you have a pass, you get in. Otherwise, you can't. You know? Everybody is well, I hope, at your end, Tom, in your family. Yes, thanks. Well? Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, we're good. Uh, our daughter Emily is home from Western, obviously early, and came back in mid, sort of mid March because they stopped doing classes there. So she's finishing school from home. Uh, Lynn, my wife, wow. you know, how, she's, how uh, time has Emily, flown. She's yeah. your daughter's in university. She's twenty one. Yeah. God. And she's going to yeah. She's going to dad's alma mater. Yeah, and mine right? too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Lynn went to Western too. Right. Okay. Lynn is well, and everybody in the extended family are well. Yeah, they're everybody's good. Um, we, uh, we, ironically, we had a big party planned for this Saturday for my brother Paul, who was turning seventy. Uh, he turned seventy on March thirteenth, but we canceled that. So, uh, and they they had a trip planned for Spain to celebrate, and they canceled that. And I had a trip planned with a couple of buddies to go to England to watch soccer games, which I do every couple of years with some friends here in Toronto. And we can't just cancel that. We're supposed to leave next Wednesday. So, um, you know, such is life. We're all going through. Well, people are going through a lot worse than. Than I am. So absolutely, yeah. Okay. Uh, Tom, this... are you working a five-day week, or in, in these unusual circumstances, have they called you in on weekends and things every now and then? No, they, I'm, I'm still working five days, Monday through Friday. So the world is sour Monday through Thursday, and the world at six on Fridays. And uh, they've got a, you know a skeleton crew on the weekends, but they're still doing World Report and World at um, World at six uh, the week or the world this weekend, I should say, with Martina Fitzgerald. She's still doing that, but they're they're keeping most people at home. It's uh, you know, uh, to be honest with you, within the CBC, at least in Toronto, they've done a pretty good job of communicating what their plans are and explaining why they're doing things. Uh, so it's been, I think they've, they've handled it pretty well. People feel comfortable. We have cleaning staff that come around every couple of hours to clean our desks, to clean the studio. Every couple of hours? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Say hi uh, to Martina, by the way, if you see her. I will. I'll see, I'll Martin, Martina Fitzgerald, remember when they were doing national sports out of Toronto, and of course Rick Clough was doing it first, but Martina did it for a while, and uh, we, 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 we had some fun. Say hi to her. I will. It's a new world. Things have changed. Let's go back to some more innocent days. Uh, people have been asking me about this ever since I announced that uh, Tim Harrison was going to be our guest this morning. It's the flatware piece. <laughs> Let me set the, let me set this up rapidly. Back in the day, and Tommy, this is about you realize this is about thirty years ago. Yeah, it's kind of scary. Yeah. But uh, back when I was hosting uh, the news around eleven o'clock, Tom was sportscaster here in Montreal, and uh, I came up with a, I, I, the genesis of this bit is too long to explain. But every every newscast, I do a little bit, maybe 30 seconds, 45 seconds, a minute long tops about something quirky that arrived on my desk or something I saw. And this is before Internet. So we would we would rely on pieces of paper coming through. And let me get into sharing here. And this was about a memo we received from uh, the CBC cafeteria. And can you see the screen, gentlemen, here? I think I can. Yeah. Okay, it's. I'm afraid that the, the it's not very uh, high resolution here. Is that a little bit better? Yeah, I'm okay because anyway, I was I'll there. See, I remember. I'll see if you if you can. I'll just do an audio check. Can you hear the audio? I cannot. You cannot hear the audio. Okay, I will narrate it then, and then uh, I will at least put a link up for people who want to see it. Uh, and it was a memo that arrived about from the CBC cafeteria because people had been, of course, taking trays and utensils and plates and things and leaving them in their offices and not returning them. So they're all rather miffed. And they sent a memo out. So I put the memo up on the air. And before, just to set up the bit, I went to Tom. I said, Tom, here's the memo. You've seen it. He says, yes. I said, this is the bit I'd like to do. He says, I'll handle it. And that was it. There was no discussion. There was no, dis there was no rehearsal. Tom knew exactly what to do. And my God, what a performer he was. And the bit was, I would read the memo, and I would show Tom the memo, and then you will see what happens once the, it's the memo. And there's the memo. And, of course, I list all of the items of 50 spoons and 500 trays and uh, 70 dozen, 70 dozen knives. <laughs> Seven dozen knives, 500 cups, and they somebody actually counted this shit. Here we go. Look at the jacket on this guy. Oh man! And I, of course, and I'm, I'm, As I'm, an I'm, salesman. and I'm insulted, and I hand <laughs> you know, and out come the utensils <laughs> out of his sleeve and watch him as, as he slowly reaches them guy. back into his into his <laughs> just the insanity. <laughs> Now, let me just back up a little bit. He was, he is such a good performer. 
Uh, and of course, he doesn't does not break a sweat. He simply picks it up and then starts reaching it back into his into his, into his jacket pocket. <laughs> Lassie, the barn's burning. <laughs> that was and uh, uh, remember Colin Cooper? Yes, indeed. Poor Colin. He was just terribly uh, insulted, and uh, he came up to us the next morning, and he showed this, and he said, would you look at this? This is terrible. This is a travesty. And our boss at the time was a guy by the name of Rock Mania. Mm -hmm. So they brought Rock in to have a look. He cracked up, and then it was over. Stephanie. <laughs> Stephanie chose Stephanie. It was all over, and uh, we got away with it. So, yeah. God, that was funny. People to this day, Thomas, are still talking about these bits. They had no Very clue what was going on in the news. But they remember us, uh, and uh, there's there's the hip waiter one too that I'll put oh, up. Oh yeah, that's a beauty. Yeah. Uh, yeah well, yeah. you should have won a Gemini for that, you guys. Yeah, that was great. But, great. I, don't re I also remember when we did one where I started, uh, you, I started reading the sports, and that, but I was lip syncing while you were reading it. Remember that? Yes. Oh, we yeah. did also. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I've never <laughs> seen that one. No. Yeah, I, and we our, did a lot of weird stuff. We had Brian. <laughs> Brian Murphy was one of our directors who was a great partner in crime because Brian was always up for trouble. For Serena yeah. Elman, too, was was the queen of directors. Serena yeah, was, was always totally up. in on it. She loved every she minute She was of in it. on it, but she took it so seriously that everything was, was pitch perfect all the way through. She would rehearse it with the camera guys before we even got on the air. So God bless you, Serena. That was a lot of fun. And that yeah. is such a long time ago, but I miss those God, days. I'd love to love it. The lip sync one is extant. I mean, I... I... I'd never heard that one. I'd never played it for him. They must have been great. Collection. Yeah, no, it was, it was pretty good. We did, we did some good. And then we did, like, and, we, and Eva and I, you know, we'd often bounce off each other. Like, we all, because we hung out off air, too, which so which I think added to it. We were we were friends. We're not anymore, of course, but we were friends. <laughs> and, 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 so we were able to do things, pull things off, and, and even, not, even unspoken, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. No, you guys had great timing, I'm telling you. I have a collection somewhere on DVD. I'm going to have to start transferring and reposting these clips because uh, I, I don't care if you like them because they make me laugh and they they bring me pleasure just to watch you this like. stuff. And, and it's, you know, it's, uh, it's funny because I thought about these days a lot over the, especially, to be honest with you, over the years with the emergence of shows like uh, like the, the Daily Show and, and the kinds of things that people do. And even Colbert the other night, I don't know if you saw what he was doing. He um, He's doing a show from home now. Oh, yeah. And he did a he his first night back Monday night he uh, was doing it for obviously not an audience and he's dressed in his suit and so you ask people you know um, what do you think suit no suit so I wrote I tweeted him I'm on Twitter pretty active on Twitter so I tweeted the Late Show and I said no suit no I said suit no pants <laughs> and um, so the next night he he stands up and he's wearing long underwear oh and I thought to myself hip waiters I should have suggested hip waiters but it, it that's far ahead of the game you were. Oh, that was fun. Up, yeah, that was fun. I make you know, like I'm a big all kinds of stuff, and uh, and people if people got the news from you, which they and they trusted. Yeah, they got the sport the sports from me, which they whatever. And but in between, they got a bit of a laugh, a, a smirk, uh, you know, goofiness. Something and I made the show you need at the long. end of a long day, yeah. you know. And and oh, the I one had Eva, the... you did where the, where the, it was with um, who was doing sports that night. Anyway, you you had the uh, the bad heart uh, machine. And it was so bad that uh, every time something oh, happened, oh, his, was, his 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 uh, v, oh, VHS was, would no, fast it was, forward. It was an old an old an old joke about he had a he had a pacemaker, and every time he sneezed, his garage door would open. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> and who yeah, was so, with you? It was oh, Scott. Scott. It was and Scott. Scott Russell. could not Scott. stop laughing. I have that on tape too. I got to start posting yeah. these clips. We we got to get Scotty on here too. But anyway, yeah, we're, we're, we're we like, go on, go on, go on. But uh, I'm a big. Just to get back to what Tommy was saying, I'm a big Colbert yeah. fan. I was a, I was a big fan of his before he took over the Late Show. But uh, mm -hmm. and he's he's still, I believe, with well, there's a Montreal guy that we know, Barry Julian. I think is still on his staff. Really? Uh, okay. Yeah. Later. Yeah. Think so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a guy, a producer on the show named Jake Plunkett. You know, have you ever seen the bits with this woman from like Brooklyn or the Bronx, the mother of a guy on the show, and she kind of roams around? Think and does so. weird stuff? No. Okay. Anyway, that's his mom. And anyway, we he, we follow each other on Twitter, and um, I can I'll message him and ask him if Barry is still there because I remember that name. Yeah. I think he's, well, Barry, uh, he's he was Barry? on strike. This... Remember when the writers went on strike in New York, mm -hmm. and uh, our our weekend show uh, got Barry on the. Uh, 
uh, on the picket line. We, 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 we called him and had a chat with Barry on the picket line. <laughs> Barry Turner. And these are real New York writers, right? Anybody want to talk to Canada about the strike? Nah, fuck <laughs> off, Canada. Yeah, New York. Yeah, we had, uh, I sent Barry a message years ago when uh, Colbert and company received an Emmy or two, I think. And I think, I think Barry received one personally too. And he wrote right back to thank me. And uh, anyway, nice young. Very well in New York. So. Quickly, uh, Tommy, I'm. And I uh, mentioned it. Uh, uh, Stan Gibbons is uh, in palliative care. Uh, oh, I'm sorry for the downer, but I just found out myself yesterday. Uh, we were uh, we have a little virtual cocktail party that we do on Zoom in the afternoon with my brother and Brian Murphy. Brian's yeah, the one who uh, say hi to Brian for me. Yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, Stan's not doing all that well. I'll find out more and see how he is, but he's he's having a bit of a rough ride, which is to do. Yeah. Time to, to be in the palliative care, too. That yeah. sounds ridiculous to say that, but uh, but and I want to share a happy memory with Stan. Tommy, you just froze on us there. So, if you Tommy, you just froze on us. If you want to start again, please. Okay, he uh, would come in on a, on a on a warm, you know, say the June or July Montreal day, you know, stultifying heat, and he'd be wearing those nylon red, really high track shorts. Um, which I always thought was an interesting look for Stan. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll just leave it there. Anyway, God, God bless you, Stan. I hope you, anyway, take care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Thomas, uh, off you go, my friend. Thank you very much, buddy. Really good to see good you, to Tommy. See you take care. Hey, anytime you want to chat, we'll do it again. I miss you a lot. Well, yeah, we'll get you back on uh, okay. sooner than later. Okay. Oh, courage, huh? Okay. You Ciao, buddy. Take care, guys. Oh, boy. And he's as fast as ever. Uh, I'm sorry to hear about Stan. We talked about him a couple of days ago, I think, uh, yeah. when we were referring to the uh, the uh, the hip waiters uh, uh, video, which I will which I will link on on our page. But uh, oh, my. OK. Yeah. Uh, George, uh, George and uh, Stan <laughs> stayed in stayed in touch for years after Stan. Yeah. Was George married. is really good about that. George is, uh, yeah. is he's very a assiduous about that. Yeah, he's stayed in yeah. touch with a lot of people. And uh, over the years, and he's uh, God bless George. We try to get George on too if he's in a if he's in a mood. Yeah, but you know it's amazing. He's doing it from home. George is busy. He's he's working that twenty four hour day. That guy. He's he always is, doing something. No flies on George. He's uh, yeah. he's quite. As a matter of fact, he was supposed to go down to the Caribbean to do a shoot. He always does. Yeah. Promotional things, but always in the in the loveliest places in the world. Oh, yeah. right? No dummy. You know? No, no, George knows exactly what he's doing. So yeah, I'm so. actually supposed to be talking to George on the phone later today. I'll, I'll let you know question. how Stan yeah. is doing. Yeah, okay. I'll put some Decent links up. Man. Yeah. Okay, our, again, our condolences to uh, to the family and uh, tip of the hat to one of our colleagues. And onward and upward, ride that surfboard and don't spill your drink. Tomorrow, so, again. Tomorrow we will join... We will join together, as they say, tomorrow again. And on Saturday, we'll be chatting with Pierre Damour, who was a colleague of mine, also worked as a journalist and a consultant and a pretty bright guy. So we'll talk to Pierre on Saturday. Goodbye. Take nice it shirt. easy. Thank la you. La tulip shirt you got there. La tulip.